In this experiment, we're going to be investigating anaerobic cellular respiration, often known as fermentation. So here I have three different test tubes, and I have yeast and sugar. Now, yeast is a microorganism that uses the process of fermentation in order to make energy. So as you can see here, every one of these, I guess, tiny little um, particles contains hundreds of different yeast colonies. Um, yeast is an organism, so right now obviously it's dehydrated or dried up, but it's an organism that will feed on sugar and use the process of alcoholic fermentation in order to make energy. So if you remember from our class discussions, we know that during alcoholic fermentation, um, glucose or sugar is broken down into pyruvate in the process of glycolysis, and then this pyruvate is going to be broken down um, into uh, carbon dioxide and, um, and alcohol as a byproduct uh, during the process of fermentation. The net amount of ATPs that are produced during this process of alcoholic fermentation is two ATPs which actually came from uh, the previous process which was glycolysis. Next, I'm going to be adding different amounts of sugar into each one of these test tubes. In the first test tube, I'm going to be adding no sugar at all. In the second test tube, I'm going to be adding only one teaspoon of sugar. So this is the measurement that I'm going to be using. And then in the last test tube, in the third test tube, I'm going to be adding three teaspoons of sugar. So in the first test tube, we are not adding any sugar. In the, in the second test tube, we are adding one teaspoon of sugar. And in the third test tube, I'm, at, I'm going to be adding three teaspoons. Next, I'm going to be adding equal amounts of yeast uh, to each of the test tubes. So I'm going to be adding one teaspoon of yeast to each of the test tubes. All right, so as you can see, I have no sugar and one teaspoon of yeast in the first test tube. I have one teaspoon of sugar and, and uh, one teaspoon of yeast in the second test tube. And then I have three teaspoons of sugar and one teaspoon of yeast in the last test tube. Next, I'm gonna measure 20 uh, milliliters of warm water. It's important that the water is warm and not cold in order to speed up the chemical reaction that is going to take place. Um, and to help the yeast feed on the sugar faster. Okay, so I'm gonna add 20 mils of warm water to each one of the test tubes. Now, since I am trying to observe fermentation, which is an anaerobic process, I have covered or sealed the test tubes to create an anaerobic environment, which means that I'm trying to prevent um, oxygen from entering into the test tubes. Next, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be giving the test tubes a bit of a shake to kind of mix the sugar and the yeast together. Once the test tubes have been gently mixed, I'm gonna let them sit um, for around 10 minutes to allow the reaction to take place. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the results. Right away, just qualitatively, we can observe that there's a lot less bubbles that were produced in the first test tube, which had no sugar, compared to the second and the third, which had one teaspoon and three teaspoons of sugar. These bubbles that were formed, uh, or the forming that you see here, is basically caused by all of the carbon dioxide uh, that was produced by the yeast as the yeast underwent alcoholic fermentation. So in addition to collecting qualitative observations, I'm also going to be collecting quantitative observations by measuring the depth of the bubbles that were produced in each of the test tubes. So in the first test tube, we can observe that there is around 0.2 centimeters produced, uh, bubbles produced. In the second uh, test tube, we have 0. Point, around 0. 0.3 or 4 centimeters. And in the last test tube, around... 0.6 centimeters uh, of bubbles were produced.